Now let's go and make some changes in the Terraform code behind this, uh, behind this workspace and see how we help you to actually test the, the PR process in a completely automated way. So I'm going to go to Harness Code Repository. And this is the repository that is connected to, uh, to this uh, workspace. And let's uh, edit the, the main TF file. This is a very simple uh, telephone code, but of course, Harness uh, so, uh, support uh, a much more uh, complex and real life uh, telephone code. But for this purpose of, uh, but for the purpose of this demo, we are just using a very simple uh, code. So, um, you know, if you remember, I had two uh, EC2 instances in the workspace, which is defined by the count. Let's see how Harness ICM helped me to test a change where I'm actually uh, increasing the number of instances from two uh, to three instances. So I am going to commit the changes and I'm going to follow the rules and do it using a feature branch. Boy. And I'm going to hit commit. And now the next thing I need to do before uh, creating the, the pull request is to uh, give a description to this uh, PR. This is where I'm using a uh, harness uh, IDA, the AI uh, assistant that will help me to generate a description. The only thing I need to do is click on this and it automatically generates uh, a description, which, you know, uh, definitely cover the change I made, increase the count of uh, AWS EC2 instances from two to three in the main TF file. Think about a use case where the PR is a little bit more complex, where you have a lot of uh, files that were changed. This, this feature definitely removes some toil from, from me uh, when, when it generates a description uh, automatically. So we're good with this. Let's uh, create the pull request and see what happens. Awesome. So as I opened uh, the PR, Harness ICM did some uh, automation behind the scene, behind the scene, and uh, populate some information that will really help me to understand what's going to be the impact of uh, of this change if I will apply it against my, my resources. So let's see the information that we have. The first thing that we see is a summary of the Terraform plan. We can see that we actually uh, added a third instance right here. And also we made a change to the two instances I, I already have. This is because I changed the instance type. I also see that we have two resources in the state file that were not affected uh, on this uh, change. This is uh, great. It's very important for me to understand not just which resources were or going to be affected by this change, but also I want to make sure that resources that were not su supposed to be affected were not touched. We also can see the, the values of the Terraform outputs, and we can also see all the different OPA policies that we are evaluating at runtime against the plan in this uh, particular uh, scenario. So we can see that we run a bunch of uh, OPA policies against the resources in the plan. And the way I set them up is I made them uh, warnings, which means they won't break the, the automation. They will just be populated here. I can also set them as uh, as Failos, which means if I breach any of these runtime policies, this automation will break and I will not be able to merge this change. Another thing that we are able to see is a cost estimation. We will be, we are able to see how the, the cloud cost is going to change if I will apply these changes. Again, because I added another machine and changed the instance type of the existing machines, uh, it is uh, not a big surprise that the cost is going to uh, to spike a little bit. So that's great. Let's uh, you know I'm fine with these changes. Let's just uh, merge them into the main branch. And now what uh, will actually happen is that these changes will trigger a pipeline coming from the main branch that will apply these changes against the uh, against the workspace.